Okay, so we know that there are two important ICH guidelines which guides us on setting the limit for unknown and known impurities. The first one is impurities into new drug substances that is ICH Q3A. The second one is impurities into new drug product that is Q3B. But these two guidelines doesn't talks about how to set the limit for total impurities. And this is the subject of today's discussion. I am going to explain you how one can set the limit for total impurities with the help of one of the published map, MAPP. And let us begin with the presentation now. So let me also tell you, this one presentation is not going to cover setting the limit for total impurities for the mutagenic impurities or the nitrosamine. You need to visit the ICH M7 guideline to understand the total impurities of the mutagenic impurities. And you may have to you know, go through the, uh, the, the guidance, the industry guidance published by the MHRA or US FDA on to the nitrosamines to understand how the total impurities of the more than one nitrosamine can be set. So let us understand now how to define the limit for total impurities and this is the map that is a manual of policies and the procedures. So what is the name of the map that is going to help us in deciding the total impurities and here it is on the screen. Establishing impurity acceptance criteria as part of specifications for NDAs, ANDAs and BLAs based on clinical relevance. So I strongly recommend you to please go through this guideline very thoroughly. I mean this video will help you out to understand it. But further if you can go in details through this document, I am sure that you will have much more deeper learning. So I am also going to give you the link in the description above or below so that you can easily access this very important and interesting document. So let us understand now what this guidance talks about as far as deciding the limit for total impurities and here is the guidance. The point number two, the acceptance criteria for total impurities excluding significant human metabolites generally should not exceed the summation of acceptance criteria for individual specified. That means it can be identified and unidentified impurities. So in short, this guidance says that you know if you have a number of known impurities, for example, five, so just sum the total limit, just sum of the specification of those individual five impurities. And that should become ideally the limit for total impurities. Is it very straightforward? So let us understand with the help of very simple example. So yes, that is the total impurity should be less than or equal to the summation of known plus highest unknown impurities. And here is the, uh, the simple example. And I'm going to explain you how one can set the limit for total impurities with the help of a drug product. It can be a tablet, it can be a semi-solid or it can be injectable product. So in this example, I have a metabolite, okay, and the limit for this metabolite is not more than 3%. Impurity A limit is not more than 1.0%, impurity B limit not more than 0.5%, impurity C limit not more than 1%, highest unknown, impurity HUI is not more than 0.5%. Then the total limit, I am going to decide based on to the summation of all known impurities and the highest unknown impurity. So, I, excluding the human metabolite. If you look at the guidance, you know, it says that the significant human metabolite can be excluded from the total impurity acceptance criteria. So, I am not going to consider the human metabolite which is having limit of not more than 3%, but I am going to count the each and every individual impurity during setting the total impurity specification. So my total impurity limit excluding human metabolite would be not more than 
if you count impurity a b c and highest unknown you will end up with the 3% as a figure total figure now this is the first guidance let us understand this second important guidance provided by this particular map the sum total of all impurity limits including those for significant metabolites should not exceed threshold that may compromise product potency or product assay through product expiry now this statement is very important and meaningful as far as confirming whatever total impurity limits we have just said and let us understand now with the same example you no know, the example of drug product with the metabolite of 3% impurity abc and there is highest unknown and we just concluded that okay not more than 3% excluding metabolite can be the limit for total impurities so i have a question for you let us say now i have a assay limit for the same drug product as a limit of between 95% to 105% now this is my the assay till the expiration of the product the shelf life limit for assay is 95 to 105 percent now if you do the summation of all the impurities including metabolite okay including metabolite how much will be there and you will find that there will be around six percent three percentage will be total impurities excluding metabolite but if i include the human metabolite then i will end up getting six percent now do you uh, understand now whether the 6% impurity in ideal scenario if I have the 100% assay for the drug product and let us say that the drug product is also getting degraded and the possible degradation is how much now 6% which is the total impurity limits so 100 minus 6 comes 94% and hence there may be a chance that my assay of drug product may be out of specification and then I need to understand that my drug product potency is getting compromised i am considering the worst case scenario this may be possible this may not be possible but while setting the specification i must consider the worst case scenario and this is the worst case scenario that six percent could be the possibility i cannot deny this possibility so how to go about it now will this limit acceptable and yes this is not going to be acceptable and let us understand now how much limit will you propose for the total impurities what should be the way forward now so the way forward as per as this particular example is concerned could be this way i need to reduce now i may consider reducing the limit for any of the stable impurity now i have a b c as a known impurities but if i found that impurity a is not at all degrading so rather than let us say 1% limit, can I reduce the limit to 0.5%? So I will get the buffer space of 0.5% from the impurity A. But still I am lacking the additional 0.5%, right? Because I need to reduce the total impurity limit at least by 1% so that I will have the cushion of maximum impurity possibilities 5% and my potency of the product will not get compromised. So consider reducing the limit for stable impurities rather than keeping it up to the most uh, which is allowable and possible you need to think about which impurities are stable and then you can reduce the specification for those impurities so that the total impurity limit will not compromise the product's potency now what is the total impurity at the end of stability so if you say that okay fine uh, i have conducted the stability for my development batches and i found that though as per this map my limit should be acceptable to three percent but i found that it is not increasing beyond one percent right so you have a fair chance of reducing the limit of total impurities to one percent but during the same time you need to also understand you know what is the possibility of reducing the limit for individual impurities so that you will have the better control on the individual impurity levels as well as the total impurities level in case if you found that okay there is no way forward my stability data shows that the impurities limit cannot be further reduced then this is the time you need to think about your product composition or processes 
to make sure that what is happening wrong and what corrections you can make so that the impurities level will not increase certain beyond proposed levels. So understand uh, adopting the different processes, formulations, compositions for your product so that you will have the impurity limit which is not going to compromise the product potency or the assay. Uh, in case if you are not able to probably manage the total impurities beyond uh, below 6%, then have the risk assessment, the risk versus benefit assessment. And this is something very difficult to justify to the any regulatory agencies. But this is the last chance you have in your hand to justify. Probably 95 to 105% assay may not be possible. And I'm going to relax my assay limit to 94 to 106% wherein I have the buffer space of 6% so that you know, if there is a 6% impurity generation, my product's potency will still meet the specification. This is something called as a risk versus benefit assessment. And if you can justify and prove to the regulators that yes, it will not have any adverse impact and what benefits it can have having this product into market, probably you will be able to launch your product in the market. So this is the way probably you can think of, you know, setting the specification for total impurities for your product. So thank you very much for watching this video and I would love to see your comment in the comment box below. Thank you and see you soon.